the big story in the June quarter, the average sales price of those phones surging to a much stronger than expected $724 due to the popularity of its high-end models. Tim Cook telling me in an interview, if you look at the iPhones that most recently launched, so that includes the 10, the 8, and the 8 Plus, grew very, very nicely in the quarter. We also took channel inventories down on iPhone by 3.5 million units, and so the underlying demand is even even stronger than the units imply. I also talked to Cook about China, where he says the 10 was the most popular smartphone in urban China for the second quarter in a row. On the call, Cook addressed trade tensions with China and other nations, making it clear he thinks tariffs are a bad idea. Our view on tariffs is that uh, they uh, show up as, as a uh, tax on the consumer and uh, wind up resulting in lower economic growth and, and sometimes can bring about significant uh, risk of unintended consequences. Another notable theme in the quarter, services revenue surging 31 percent to nearly $10 billion. Cook telling me we've got great momentum there and hit a number of records in the quarter from Apple Music to the App Store to Apple Care to Apple Pay. It's a very broad based result, both in terms of geography and in terms of the services themselves. On the call, Cook said Apple Pay expanded with well over one billion transactions in the quarter. Cook saying that means Apple completed more total transactions than Square and more mobile transactions than PayPal. Guys, back to you. Josh, I wonder if um, the higher average selling price, which everybody is, uh, is kind of uh, pleased to see, I think, if you own Apple stock today, how related is that to uh, selling these iPhones on the installment plan? It seems like maybe you'd be less price sensitive, more likely to go for the more expensive phone if you're paying it by month. I, I think that's a great point, Mike. Um, I also, you know, we did try to get in, into how Cook is thinking about pricing from here. You know, investors, uh, traders, investors, business people want to know, you know, how does the iPhone 10's pricing impact how Cook is thinking about pricing those next generation of devices? Cook simply saying, listen, we price products uh, based on the value we think they're providing. Of course, we think three new models could be uh, coming in September. I also think it's interesting, you know, we had a guest on Squawk Box this morning. You're thinking about... Um, um, not so much a bump in pricing for, let's call it the iPhone 11, but, you know, if, let's say, 20% is iPhone 10 right now, how many more people can Tim Cook and Luca Maestri get um, to move to those higher price models in the quarters ahead? Can they move it to 30% or 40% from here? Hey, Josh, any kind of hints or signals, uh, either in your conversation or in that earnings call, about what the next lineup of iPhones might look like? No, no, uh, Morgan, um, you know, Cook is never going to tip his hand to uh, his pipeline. They, they're just, they don't play that game in the same way that, that other tech investors do. I will say, um, obviously, another reason we're seeing the stock moving higher today is because that Q4 revenue guide was stronger than expected. And so, you know, analysts yeah. try to read the tea leaves a little bit, see what's coming. Talk to Gene Munster. I caught up with him last night to get his take. He thinks um, that guidance implies, you know, if we're expecting three new iPhones in September, he thinks that guide implies that at least two of those new models will not only get introduced, but will launch in September. We'll see.